Uh, hello students uh, so uh, so let's continue with the uh, with the repeaters uh, section of this particular lecture so in the last lecture we had seen about this uh, particular folded technology and then the uh, the conventional cmos design whereas in the folded technology uh, we got uh, uh, the the normalized parasitic factor to be nothing but uh, 1 by 2 moving ahead so my overall uh, segment of the wire with the repeater 1 so let me actually rewrite this so this particular portion uh, is for the repeater you know the the one part of the repeater number 1 and then this particular portion is for the the input capacitance seen from the repeater number 2 so i'm going to write it as a repeater number 2 and in between uh, this particular uh, section is our uh, segment of the wire right so i'm going to write it as segment right so this particular segment of the wire uh, i have the resistance rw l by n and the uh, capacitance on both the sides of the resistance will be cw l by 2n and then cw l by 2n uh, represents our pi model so that's what i have uh, written here the repeater number 1 i will have uh, the switching resistance of r by w and then the parasitic capacitance of cw uh, rho invert inverter it could be 1 or 0.5 as per the design technology node and uh, the input capacitance of the repeater number 2 is cw so we have the capacitances we have the switching resistance of the uh, repeater number 1 accommodated so this is for one particular segment so the r uh, the switching resistance or the capacitances or the resistance of the wire everything kind of involved in this one particular segment of the wire which uh, you know which starts from the repeater number 1 and then ends at the input of the repeater number 2 so similarly for the uh, you know if i have the uh, length of the wire segmented into n segments so uh, n multiplied by this particular uh, you know the rc a uh, circuit uh, representation for one segment if i actually multiply it by n times i should be able to represent the whole length of the wire with an inserted uh, repeaters right uh, so we will be able to have the overall representation now considering this particular one segment of representation let's now try to uh, understand the delay aspect so the delay for the one segment the delay of the one segment so the propagation delay i have not written it as falling or rising uh you know it could be i'm mean, considering that both the uh and you know, both of them will be the same so i'm considering the propagation delay for one segment of the wire and if i consider that i will have this as a source node it could be connected to vdd or to the ground so in that sense if i consider the elmore delay so the cw rho in multiplied by rw r by w and if i consider uh, you know cw uh, l by 2n uh, will be multiplied by the uh, the shared resistance of r by w uh, this particular capacitance and then this particular capacitance cw and then cw l by 2n should get multiplied by r by w plus r w l by n right so if i consider the r by w here uh, it will have all the capacitances all the four capacitances and then this particular resistance will get multiplied by these two capacitances so that's what i have written so this becomes the overall uh, you know or rather you know one segment of the wire and its propagation delay so if i have n segment of the wire then i will have uh, you know the everything multiplied by n so that's what i have written here and if i multiplied by n this particular uh, n will in the denominator will get cancelled so this uh, the second part of this uh, delay expression will be uh, will be rwl multiplied by these two capacitances so what next now that we have estimated the you know we have expressed the overall delay uh, for the uh, for the uh, n segments of the wire of length l with you know uh, in between the each of the segments we have added the repeaters right or in this particular case we have added the inverters inverters in the form of the repeaters uh so let's try to identify what should be that optimum w or what should be the optimum width of the repeater right so remember that this is the scaling of the repeater and it's not the width of the wire it is the scaling now how wide the repeater or the inverter in this particular case should be so that i'll get the minimum delay so if i make it is equal to 0 uh, then i should have you know uh, use that particular previous slide expression and then differentiate with respect to w and then equate it to 0 
Turns out that the optimum W for the minimum delay is nothing but the square root of R C W uh, divided by R W C, where uh, this C W and then R W are the properties of the uh, wire per unit length, right? So this is the wire per unit length uh, will give me uh, the C W and R W. C W is nothing but uh, the capacitance per unit length and R W is nothing but the resistance per unit length. And R and C are the nothing but the switching uh, resistance and then the capacitance uh, of the uh, of the inverters, right? Or the repeaters here, right? So in this case, the R value is nothing but uh, the unit inverter switching resistance, and the C value is the unit inverter's uh, parasitic capacitance or the whatever the input capacitance. And C W and R W is nothing but the characteristics of the wire because it is actually C W R W. Um, the units per unit length of the wire, right? So I should be able to find out what should be the scaling of the repeater, what should be the scaling of the inverter here so that we will get the minimum delay, right? Now I can also have, you know, if, if I look into that particular previous expression, uh, this particular expression for the end segment of the wire, which means it, you know, all the, uh, for the overall length of the wire connecting between the driver and the receiver, uh, it is a function of W, right? As well as it is a function of N, right? It is a function of N, it is a function of N, right? So if I go back and if I make the differentiation of the propagation or the delay with respect to the N and equate it to zero, I should be able to find out the best actually L by N factor, right? Although I've done uh, the differentiation of N, assuming that uh, the L is, is a factor, so if I do a, that particular differentiation with respect to the n, I should be able to find out uh, the best n value and I can redefine it in, the, in terms of L by n, right? So the best L by n for the minimum delay turns out to be the square root of 2 RC into 1 plus uh, rho inverse, which is nothing but the, the normalized parasitic factor divided by RW, CW. Again, remember the RW and CW is the characteristics of the wire. R and C are nothing but the switching resistance and then the uh, uh, capacitances, uh, the parasitic capacitances or the input capacitances seen at the, um, you know, uh, of the unit inverter. And the square root of that, L is the length of the wire and N is the number of segments in the wire that is being made, right? So the number of segments of the wire that is being made and then we have inserted uh, the repeaters and uh, generally if I have N segments, I will have N minus one repeaters. Right, so this N is the number of segments and L is the length of the wire. So the best L by N, so that I'll get the minimum delay is nothing but given by this particular expression. And the best W, that is the size, the, the scaling of the inverters to form the repeater is given by the square root of RCW by RWC. Now let's take a look at this particular, uh, you know, unit inverter, it's a unit inverter driving four unit inverters. So I have a capacitance of C, and I have a capacitance on the gate side of each of the four inverters. Unit inverters is nothing but 1C, 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 1C. So the overall capacitance is seen at this particular node is nothing but 5C, right? So the propagation delay of 5C and then the switching resistance of R will be nothing but R into 5C. So that is 5RC, right? Now why it is important is F FO4 Right, we will normally get uh, the characteristics uh, for a particular technology node uh, in the form of, you know, if I design a chip here and somewhere here, I will have a FO4 circuit. The objective of an FO4 circuit is to characterize, right? The objective here is to say that what should be the, what is the characteristics of this FO4 and one of the characteristics parameters is the delay, right? Which is nothing but uh, turns out to be phi uh, RC and what is that particular value? So generally, when we design the chip, we will have small FO4 uh, circuits and around the space of the corners where the, there are some space in the chip. And then we design that FO4 circuit and then identify what is the delay. So generally the chip, whenever it is characterized uh, according to the technology node, whether it is a 65 nanometer technology node or a 45 nanometer technology node, we will get the first and foremost parameter will be the FO4 value, right? FO4 uh, in terms of the delay. So if I have an FO4 value, which is nothing but phi RC, now can we rewrite this particular uh, L by N parameter or W parameter, if it is possible, 
in the form of FO4. W parameter, I think it is very difficult to write in the form of an FO4, so we don't write it. But the L by N parameter, because it is 2RC, I can easily convert it into 5RC, which is nothing but FO4. So L by N as a function of FO4, I can write it. And uh, you know, this is the expression. So instead of 2RC, twice the RC, it will be nothing but uh, FO4, which is nothing but 5RC. So if I want it, uh, uh, FO4 uh, in terms of 2RC, right? So 2RC turns out to be FO4 divided by 5 multiplied by 2, right? Um, and uh, that is what it uh, turns out to be 0.4 FO4 into uh, uh, 1 by rho inverse, uh, the parasitic factor of the inverter divided by RWCW in the whole, uh, the square root. FO4 is nothing but fan out of 4. Right, fan out of four circuits, uh, and in the reason it is called as a fan out is the fan out or the electrical effort turns out to be actually B four. Right, so a inverter driving a unit inverter driving the four um, uh, other uh, uh, unit inverters. Right, hope this is clear. Moving ahead, so my uh, the propagation delay for the n segment of the wire is actually given by uh, this particular expression, which is taken from the our earlier slides. So it is nothing but you know for n multiplied by uh, r into c uh, rho inverse plus one. So this c is nothing but uh, you know if I consider the repeater number one, it's parasitic uh, uh, inverter, uh, which is c uh, uh, c w. Uh, uh, rho inverse and then this R is nothing but R by W the switching resistance so the W and W get cancelled here and then I have written plus one here which represents uh, uh, the uh, the capacitance uh, on the repeater two side which is coming as an input uh, gate capacitance so that should be C into uh, W but because of the switching resistance of R by W so that W and this W will also get cancelled and then we will have a value of one. And I have CW L by 2N and then CW L by 2N uh, getting added and makes it as CW L by N multiplied by the switching resistance of the repeater 1 uh, inverter. Plus RW L by N which gets multiplied by the CW uh, of the repeater 2's input capacitance plus uh, CW L by 2N uh, which is uh, you know coming from the capacitance uh, of the pi model on one side. So this is my overall delay. And if I do divide by L, uh, I will get N by L and then the same expression here. And if I actually put uh, TPD by L and uh, uh, you know, so this N by L will actually go into the denominator and then become L by N here. And then RCW uh, L by N will get cancelled. So I have RCW by W and RWCW uh, L by N L by N will get cancelled here. And then finally I will have RWCW by 2. L by N. So notice that what I've done is TPD by L expression. So the delay per unit length, right, is written in the form of L by N, W, W and then L by N. And to find out the best delay per unit length of the wire, right, the best delay per unit length of the wire, we have got the optimum W's, optimum W's, and we have got the optimum L by N. Right, the expression for the optimum L by N and then the expression for the W optimum W, if I put it here, I should be able to find out what should be the minimum delay per unit length of the wire. Right, if I have N segments and uh, if I have repeaters inserted in each of the N segments of the wire. So doing that, I should be able to find the minimum delay per unit length of the wire. So minimum delay per unit length of the wire by substituting this uh, optimum L by N and W parameters. So substituting the optimum uh, L by N, which is nothing but, uh, you know, the square root expression, which we have calculated or estimated and the optimum W here, uh, optimum W here, and then the optimum L by N here. Finally, we get uh, the, uh, the, the minimum delay per unit length of the wire is nothing but square root of R W C W R C and, uh, you know, the, uh, and then multiplied by the square root of two plus one plus rho in plus two. Right, so this is an expression uh, for a wire. So this is an expression for a wire from, uh, you know, uh, from A to B where I have a driver circuit. 
and I have a receiver circuit and where it is kind of there is n such segments and each of the segments has a uh, has an inverter which acts like a repeater. So uh, this is an expression for uh, you know the overall delay per unit length of the wire and it is in terms of RW, CW, uh, the characteristics, resistance and then the capacitance of the wire and then we have R and C which is nothing but uh, the unit inverters switching resistance and then the uh, the unit inverters uh, capacitance all right and then we also have this uh, the delay per unit length as a function of the normalized uh, 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 normalized parasitic factor for the inverter it could be uh, one and it could be also be less than one uh, using the folded technology uh, so one thing i wanted to uh, you know uh, uh, mention here is what we have uh, finally evaluated is this particular uh, delay per unit length of the wire so what it means is if suppose I have a long uh, length of the wire starting from A to B on A side we have a driver's uh, driver uh, circuit in the form of an inverter or any other combinational circuit and then on the B side I have a receiver circuit that could be also be a combinational circuit uh, and earlier we had seen uh, an inverter circuit uh, but what we have done is uh, we have actually divided this into n segments and in each of these n segments we have inserted uh, an inverter so we have an inverter uh, inserted uh, in each of these particular points so i have an n segments uh, so each of these segments i can call it or i can label it and then form it as an n segments and have we have added an inverter in each of this uh, segment point so we have an n minus one inverter uh, so we added this inverter in the form of a repeater so that at the end of the wire B we will get a very good signal strength. So that is that is one purpose. The another purpose is if I have uh, the the long length of the wire right from A to B without any repeaters, we know that the delay uh, in this particular case will be directly proportional to the square right of the length of the wire. Right in this particular case, because now we have got L by N as an optimized number, now the delay with the segmented uh, wire uh, with, you know, wire with the segmented as well as with addition of repeaters, so I'll call it as a wire with repeaters, uh, the L by N becomes a constant and my overall delay in this particular case uh, will be directly proportional to the length of the wire, right? So we tend to believe that uh, you know if I have a long length of the wire A to B uh, uh, with uh, with the repeaters in each of this uh, segmented uh, part or the demarcation point part, then uh, it will have the overall delay of not only the the length of the wire but also the propagation delay of all these repeaters, right? Or all these inverters which are added as a form of the repeaters. So my overall delay uh, for the wire with the repeaters, we tend to believe that that will be more then that of uh, you know the delay with respect to the uh, wire ab but that is not the case remember that we have added the inverters or the repeaters here and we have optimized the w value so w value optimized parameter will will help us in driving the current right uh, for each of the segments of the wire so for each of the segments of the wire we will have a good driving current because the repeaters are added the repeaters are added in an intention that we will get a good signal strength at a particular point B, but also the driving current will help to ensure that the overall delay for each of the segments of the wire, right, will be will be very very less, and thereby the overall delay for the segment uh, for the for the length of the wire A to B will also be actually be reduced, right? Then when we compare that with the uh, the wire delay without the repeaters. So essentially we have reached to a point where the, the delay per unit length or the propagation delay per unit length of the wire which is kind of uh, you know which, uh, which we have uh, expressed for the minimum delay tends to be actually be less than for the delay of the wire with no repeaters.